guys to just bear with me. I promise I won't breathe on you. Um, everyone, just for a second, uh, take out their cell phones. And I know that seems weird to do in class. But take it out and tell me if anyone doesn't have any bars, any service, so most likely it's correct. But I won't say that. Okay. Doesn't have service. Does not have service. I don't have service. Okay. <laughs> Mine's very low on the bar. <laughs> okay. So basically, the reason why I had you guys all do this is sort of an introduction to um, the company that I chose. I provided a little bit of a feedback, just something that you could uh, quickly reference to. Um, so I know it's kind of a complex uh, company. So mine, a little bit different than um, other people's, is it's actually an existing company. So this is real. It was uh, started in 1997 by four founders. Their um, home base is in uh, Overland Park, Kansas, out in Corporate Woods. Uh, it's a company that I've actually worked for. I worked for them for about a year, so I got a good uh, handle on sort of what they do. I'm not going to say the actual name, just, um, just to keep it confidential. Um, but yeah, so. Basically what they do is, they are the consulting firm to build cell phone towers for different carriers. So that includes Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, um, you got it. So I know you guys, when you're driving down the road, don't really think about you know, how, how I'm having service, you just mainly notice it when you don't have it. But I guess that's kind of a beauty of the situation. So, um, the company is, is small. They lease just a small portion in Corporate Woods. It's like the third floor in one of the buildings. Um, and that's where the home quarters is. There's about 50 employees with um, about 20 contractors. So um, they're not full-time employees. They um, pretty much just work for a specific company to kind of relay the message back and forth. What goes on is that it's sort of a life cycle. I kind of thought of it as a, a little bit of a similar line where the cell phone vendor tells our company, um, this company that I'm talking about, if they have a certain amount of drop calls, um, they provide a graph, which kind of looks like a bunch of little points on a graph, and they basically say to us, I'm, I'm giving you this radius, 100 feet, 150 feet, can you please find somewhere where we'll be able to build a tower, or a tower that's already existing that we can latch onto, because you guys may not know this, but for one tower, there could be three carriers on it. There could be one carrier on it. It's not just one specific Verizon tower. Um, so a lot of people, that's something that I never really thought about when I started um, at the company. So basically what they do is they send somebody out. Um, first part of the, the assembly line is a site acquisition. So they send out a site act um, to go basically door to door, knocking on people's doors, finding out if, um, if there's not a tower there, if they would be interested in having one basically in their backyard. There's certain, depending on the counties, the different cities and stuff, there's certain regulations which go into the next zoning entitlements area where you can only build a tower 50 feet from a certain resi um, residence area, different uh, laws that come into play when you're, uh, when you're looking to build a tower. Next comes um, the engineering, which is where they pass off, well, here's a good spot to have a tower. This is what uh, the county says, whether it can be visible, whether it can't be. Um, different things like that, and the engineers basically, they engineer the tower um, uh, so that it can be passed off to the construction management team and be, it be actually built. Um, as you probably have guessed already, it doesn't take you know overnight sort of do this sort of thing. It has to go through uh, a different life cycle phase. So currently they're in, uh, the, okay, as I mentioned before, the home base is in Owen Park, Kansas. They do have certain sites um, that they're in St. Louis and in um, Colorado. Colorado is the newest addition as of a year ago. And so basically what, when um, our professor asked us for an idea, this is what came to my mind because I'm kind of nerdy and some stuff really interests me. Um, but I just, as I was working for that company, I just realized so much potential that they could do. They, they really weren't aggressively um, going towards what I felt like the company could do, what a lot of people felt the company could do. So. My idea was to, um, as far as areas of improvement, is to increase the amount of employees in the company so that you don't have um, two people doing zoning where they're stressing every week that there's a deadline on Friday, there's something on Wednesday, someone has to go to a hearing here, someone has to go to a meeting there. Um, so basically just putting two or three more people in each department 
um, engineers a little bit more um, based on the workload. And then expanding to other states. So this would include Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Iowa, which I thought were great for this, just because a lot of this, the areas that they have towers are very, um, there's rooftops and cities and everything, but the rural areas is where it really needs, where you, know, you don't have as many bars, you're not surrounded by um, a bunch of rooftop towers or anything in the city. So that's a place where I felt they'd be able to um, be the most success, most successful. So um, that's why I chose Omaha, just mainly because they were surrounding Kansas, and so it would be easy as far as traveling costs, um, as far as uh, just communication and everything. Um, and then actually building sites, offices in certain cities. So in Omaha, in uh, Tulsa, and then in Des Moines. So you have just a small area, small office, just, um, I think you described, it, described your company was four people in a room type of uh, mentality where you have one from each department in there and uh, just basically going out wherever uh, the vendors need and knocking door to door just like we do um, here in Kansas City. So um, that's, that's pretty much where I was. I was wondering if anybody had any questions. Uh, what we're seeing, I mean, it's clear this is a, a company, fills a service, has, has a need, growth. Why, what, other than identifying these places to expand, what, what's your value proposition? What are you going to bring to the company? To help yeah, um, I would help oversee um, those, those offices in those specific cities. I looked around a little bit of different costs. Um, you know, to lease a space for a certain amount of months, it can range anywhere, which I got ballpark from 2000 to 50000 um, depending on the area uh, that you're looking at. And so I chose those big cities, just big cities in those states, um, as sort of a home base sort of thing. So what I would do is I would help lead uh, the expansion for those different states, um, help with the hiring process as far as the departments, um, really kind of training people, because since it's such a complex concept, um, it took me a year to truly feel comfortable about what all the business does, um, just sort of help train and facilitate that. So, I mean, are you going to be traveling between all these states? Yes. Or are you going to start them one and then another? And yes, another? and it wouldn't be, yeah, it wouldn't be all at once. It would be um, one each year, just by kind of like, I had them spaced that way. So, this is, Omaha, year, Nebraska. this is a three year plan? Yes, it is. So, so um, what kind of revenues are you going to bring to the table by being here? Uh, right now, they're making about it was, it was a little bit harder than I thought getting that a hold of those numbers just because uh, it's a private company. Um, but right now they're about 85 to 90 uh, million dollars in gross sales. So it's, it's expensive <laughs> to make a tower. Um, so uh, I, w I would say that each site could probably bring to the table um, about 20 million is a ballpark. So so you'd be increasing top top line revenue by like seventy percent at the end of year three. Am I right there? If you're talking about a ninety million ninety million in top line revenue and twenty million in each of these sites, so sixty million uh, onto the ninety million. Yes. So about seventy percent. So yes. Why have I mean obviously apart from your initiative, you think about this, why has the company not moved forward? That's I think that's pretty yeah. It's, Great set yeah. <laughs> um, mainly because as far as um, that company, there's mainly, there's two, I'll, I'll give it three competitors. So this isn't the only tower consulting firm there is out there in the entire uh, United States. So there's, there's competitors out there. Um, the great thing about that company is that there's so many uh, department heads with legal um, expertise that makes them a little bit different than some of the other consulting because it, you can get a lot of legal trouble as far as like towers and everything, a lot of hearings and everything like that. So um, basically, the the owners of the company they're all um, they're they start off partners, um, <coughs> they're incorporated, uh, but they weren't they're not very <coughs> they're towards the end of their careers. So um, you know they're not. You know, going out traveling, they're not the ones going out knocking door to door and everything so are they like that. To sell? I think they will be, yes. Um, Which is why they're not going to go out and spend yeah. years building so, out, doubling their top line revenue. Can I 
Isn't there a way for them to go to, isn't there a way for, for them or you to go to market with, especially if, if they're looking for a, a glide path um, home, how did, wouldn't it make sense for them to, to come in and say, we, we will do that, we'll build you this tower for this much money because there's revenue based on the rent from the tower, right? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So we'll do it for, we'll actually do it for much less money, but we, we participate in the, in the revenue. Rather than it's done, we'll pay you, the consulting is over, it's built, write us a check. It would seem to me that part of the, the turn could be taking it for a longer, taking the model a little bit and having the revenue not just drop off the table when the project's done, we'll actually take a little less money, but we take it out over a much longer time. And I think that would be more um, attractive to the major carriers mm -hmm. that way too. They like it. They would love to push that out in the future. Money later is much better for them. Well, sort of something that I guess I didn't I, I didn't touch um, touch on is not only once the tower is built do they just, just the line of revenue just quit, but they also participate in um, tower improvements. So for instance going from 3G to LTE, those towers are going to need improvements, which is what a service that they provide. They also do tower audits because towers have audits. They have to make sure that everything's secure, everything is according to the lease. Um, they do lease reviews. Um, they do a bunch of different other services, which is what also makes it a little bit different than um, some of those other consulting things. That's good. One quick question. Is there something that's just going to shoot this whole idea dead? Are we going to be out of the tower business? Is this going to be blockbuster video? Yeah. Um, Are we going to bounce this off a of satellite and forget the towers soon? No, <laughs> no. You need those towers to provide the, the a certain amount of radius. I see what you're saying as far as like a satellite. Currently, I would say no as far, and then also those leases that are currently, that have been there for the past 11 years, some of them are on 50, <coughs> 50 year leases. There's there's ones that are, that are expanded. Um, I would not say that this is gonna be a blockbuster thing. Um, technology is always changing in, in that aspect. Satellite, I mean, I haven't heard of that at all as far as powering a cell phone so that you get um, so you get the, the data, the, the call service, anything like that. Um, I have never come across research where that's been. Uh, so you mentioned that um, different companies. Sorry, are, she's, no, kept, she's kept no, raising no, her hand. No, no, no. Well, I was going to say that, so there's, oh, there's already four owners in the company. Are you going to come in as an owner or are you just going to come in and, and sell your value proposition? Or is there some percentage that you have to buy in? Um, I, my original plan, well, it started off as four, it's moved down to three, um, for another reason, but um, my my sort of take was not to come in and be like, oh, make me a partner, this is what I'm gonna do, this is what I'm gonna do. That wasn't my initial plan. Um, I mean, I would love to suddenly take it over, um, just because I feel like there's so much potential, um, but, my, my sort of thing was to, um, kind of like what you, you said, your second option, where it was um, to come in to um, take sort of a certain percentage and, and go about it that way. There's definitely some risk there if you're looking to sell it. You don't want to get yes, there sold, is. sold along with the business. <coughs> yes. Okay. You mentioned that there were several um, different companies on each tower. Is there no disincentive for Verizon to disallow people to be on a tower and so that they can maintain their network or sprint? Because I think a lot of the value proposition of cell phone companies these days is if cell phone prices are about the same and the equipment is about the same is who's got the best network. Mm -hmm. and so it doesn't make sense that, and, that, and that, I was just curious by your presentation, it, are there no like only towers? So like this is a sprint yeah, there, tower. Yeah, there is. There are but towers. But that's, that's not a here. wide. There's not a widespread strategy by the carriers no. to, to, to only their towers yeah, exclusive. There's not. Um, from my what I came across um, when I would help with different stages, which was just blowing my mind because I assumed that's how it was. I thought it was you know I saw a tower, Verizon's tower. Um, that's not very common at all. You'll get multiple carriers you know, depending on how big the tower is, how tall the tower is. Um, you know, if it's attached to a light pole, then you know it's going to be it's going to be one carrier. You can't really fit two. If it's a bigger structure, you can get multiple ones. Um, I don't see, in my experience, um, carriers doing just a, my own tower. 
Who owns the tower? Um, well, there's different tower facilities, but it's basically one person, um, <coughs> the, the main owner, and then they each pay lease that they rent. So, for instance, say um, Verizon was the one that came up with the idea, they want a tower here. Sprint is, can latch onto it the, um, if they want to or not, and then they would pay, they pay a rent. <coughs> to Verizon? To Verizon. There are a lot of them. <coughs> Could you look at um, owning the towers? And leasing them to Verizon. I think I think that's been that's been looked at um, as far as I don't have the answer. Yeah, it would free up all of their capital. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know the answer to that. And then you would collect rent ongoing on a fifty year lease. You could sell that as an investment vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes.